Okay. okay. And it's 10.04, so uh, we'll call the meeting to order. And the first item on the agenda is minutes of the previous meeting, which were distributed uh, uh, by Bob, Robert. Bob's uh, good. <laughs> Bob's good, good. <laughs> uh, does anybody uh, wish to uh, have any comments or make a motion to accept the meeting, the minutes? I'll make a motion to accept. Uh, may I just, uh, sorry, I'll interrupt, but I just want to remind everyone we need to identify ourselves yes. before we speak. Marsha Marion, I'll make a motion to accept. Okay, do we have a second? This is John Schuyler. Yes, Danny Lyon. I'll, I'll um, make a motion to second. I'll We're second good. that motion. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Uh, any time for any comments, uh, additions, uh, corrections, deletions, et cetera, at this moment. Okay, hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion passed. Very uh, well. I guess we have, it. perhaps it's a little early, but any comments or concerns of any person present today? Uh, uh, I guess thinking particularly of Bonnie, if, she's, if anything has come up that she would like, uh, it, that we might consider to put on the agenda. No, thank you. Okay, then uh, old business, status of 2020 legislation. Frank? Okay. Um, or Kat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but basically we are, I'm trying to call up my, the email I got here. Oh, and uh, there it is. Okay, um, we are not gonna be dealing with any of our technical issues in special session this year. We, so basically that's any of the, our issues. We expect that our well, and we expect that our legislative package will not be raised until the 2021 session. So at this point, the you know the, the 2020 legislation looks like it's maybe turning over to the next session. Okay. Um, does that include the uh, the regular regulatory uh, adjustments? That's separate, but unfortunately, um, in, the, in my same. Um, at the same time I asked, I got, unfortunately, there has not been any movement on the Board of Accountancy regulations. And this was as of, well, last Thursday. So unfortunately, you know, the, I mean, I guess technically the um, continuous testing won't really be, I mean, even though it's starting now, it won't be kicking until August. We, so it's not, we still have t some time, but there's, I don't know if we're going to get that passed in time. I'm kind of jumping ahead to the next part of the uh, agenda. I'm not sure we're going to have enough um, get our regs passed to allow continu you know, continuing continuing continuous uh, testing mm. in Connecticut in um, at least by August. Well, that that is disappointing, but it is basically what we expected and would have been in the normal time frame if COVID hadn't happened. So. Um, I guess maybe we can just try to push it when the uh, the next session, regular session starts. Well, I mean, it's it's going through the process, and hopefully they can get it through, you know, in the next month or two. Um, okay. Before that, I'm not, you know, I mean, I, I my, it was my, my, we've had other regs get through the DCP's been working on, or at least move advance. And these advanced long faster than than we were told that they were going to at, mm -hmm. back in the spring because of the, because of COVID. But for whatever reason, they stalled again, um, and you know maybe the reopening and some some of the things going on just uh, slow things down. I don't know, but um, oh, yeah, I'll, understood. I'll, I'll stay with our, uh, you know, stay in touch with our the people who do actually deal with the rigs in the process and see if we can keep that get that moving again. Well, on the one hand, we're not an extremist at this point, and uh... no, we're head of South Carolina. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> One out of 50. <laughs> so unless there's any comments, I think there's not much we can do except wait and see if there's anything we have to address in several months. Very good. And I guess that covers all the old business, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. Does anybody have any comments or thoughts on that? Uh, Anything they'd like to add? Okay, hearing none, a new business, CPA Evolution. 
Okay, this was, um, I'm not sure who else was part of the uh, Eastern Regional Meeting, but the most recent information that at least I got came from the conversation there. Um, and, Actually, uh, I think we almost had a quorum on that. <laughs> uh, it was a, probably the heaviest uh, participation we've had in a, because it was remote. That was nice. Yeah. But, but Maz was looking for input on, um, on this by the end of August. And, um, you know, they, they do have some UAA uh, proposed changes, but, you know, also just on, uh, on the uh, concept at all. I mean, I guess I was just brought up here just to see if, what, what the board thought. I mean, we do have, you know, unfortunately do have to make some changes, more changes to our regulations to eliminate the specificity of the exam sections that we have currently. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the good news is this doesn't, they're, they're looking to start this in January of 2024. So hopefully we have enough time to, to get that through. I mean, I'm hesitant to, to put these, to, to propose changing the, those regs now until the other ones get through. Um, right. But, you know, we, I will, as soon as those do get through, I'll say, oh, by the way, now we have another set that needs to get done. But this is pretty straightforward and technical. It'll just be getting rid of the four exam sections um, that are specific in, in there. Um, but um, let's see, I'm just looking down at my notes from the meeting. The, um, I'm, just, I'm hoping that uh, perhaps there will, I, I, I'm assuming that there will be some model language that will be proposed. And I'm hoping that will be unspecific enough so that it doesn't have to change every time there's a tweak, because I imagine there will be lots of tweaks as this thing comes out. Right. Uh, and and that's there are something right. we I'm might sorry, suggest. It's, and I, I've not been identifying myself. I apologize. This is Frank Rinelli again. Oh, I mean, there are proposed changes to the UAA, the um, Uniform Accountancy Act that they have, um, mostly having to do actually with education requirements. Uh, there's one that the accounting program must be recognized by, um, it would remove the requirement that accounting program being recognized by the Council for Higher Education Accreditation. Instead, the program would be recognized just by the individual boards. Um, I'm guessing that's for, again, for flexibility purposes. Um, so we would have to look into, you know, I don't know what ours say, and I apologize, but I'll, you know, we have time, but I'll look into that. Uh, there's another proposed change that um, for, about develop, developing skills and critical thinking and professional skepticism has been advanced by accounting educators worldwide. I'm reading from the cover letter that NASBA mm -hmm. has in the UAA. And then consistent with the proposed mo revised model of the uniform CPA examination, establish required accounting content that is core to the accounting profession is defined in rule 5-2D2. You know, I, I guess you gotta be, I think that goes back to actually, um, Mr. Chairman, to your comment about trying to be a little careful about being too specific, too specific. you know, with, with some of these things. Um, and they, they even get into the model, the, the UAA about pre-approval of intern program, internship programs and independent study um, I'm not sure if we, I don't know if, I don't think we get into that too much with our, in either our rules are, or our, our, our statutes. Um, mm -hmm. but, and then there's also looking into transcript reviews. So there's a lot of education in here. Changes. Right. And, and, and I also note that, uh, uh, I, I'm just going to read from a chat here, though, because I think it's appropriate to, to do now uh, rather than hold to the the, the more open session. Uh, uh, but there there are a number of states that have, con that have concerns with a number of the proposed changes. I don't know what they are, and apparently neither does uh, uh, Bonnie doesn't either. Um, and so, if there is a possibility that we will want to. Uh, make some thoughts known when we learn what those uh, what those uh, 
what those concerns might be. I don't remember any serious concerns from the, the Northeast uh, Regional Meeting. But then again, that was one of the first meetings that Mark Aronowitz couldn't make, and he's always our go-to guy for, uh, for good notes. Uh, <laughs> um, so if uh, it, it may be a situation where we might want to you know, hold something before our next scheduled meeting if they're expecting a, a, res a response of, of input before uh, the end of August. But we just see, and if we could get those distributed. Um. Yeah, because usually, I apologize, Frank Rinelli, and I apologize for interrupting. Yeah, I, I often NASBA will send a request, you know, send an email with, with that. Right. If they did, I missed it. Um, I haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, uh, but they might not, you know, if it's just, well, yeah, I don't know. They, they wouldn't necessarily. They would send out a request, perhaps, but they wouldn't necessarily send out certainly a list of concerns that other states have. Right. And if we knew what they were, we might say, hmm, that's pretty valid concern. Maybe we should be looking at that, too. Right. I guess, you know, what I could do, let me just make a note of it. I, maybe we could reach out to some of the other states that we have semi-regular contact with and see if they, what they're raising. And um, I can get the word out there. Yeah, the interesting thing, and this is just a side that John Schuyler again, that, that I, I think the profession is making the right move actually to to take a look at subspecialties in there. Now, for example, you know, I was always an auditor and, and from 19, 1979, I think was the last time I even did a draft corporate tax return. And so I would consider myself totally incompetent for that. And I think that that's something there. And yet, most of most of the big international hits, uh, like the recent Wirecard scandal over in Germany, are on simple things like uh, actually independent confirmations of bloody cash. <laughs> uh, so I don't know how they test critical thinking, et cetera, but um, uh, but so it, this is going to be a this is going to be a significant change as 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 they go through this, and I'm I'm sure it's I'm sure whatever comes up, we're going to think we're going to be happy with it until it gets implemented, and then we're going to find out maybe we're not a hundred percent happy. Tim, you guys were the good guys here in uh, Wirecard, weren't you? <laughs> you got it. You're you're on mute. <laughs> Okay, this is John Schuyler again. Do we have uh, any any other comments anybody would like to make on evolution? Uh, yeah, one other thing. This is Mark Aronowitz. Uh, there was one mention there. This is when uh, Lori Tisch was speaking on CP evolution to hold state board meetings at colleges and universities. Did you happen to catch that? No, and I'm not. I'm not quite sure why, but we've um, talked about that before. Back when I was CTCPA president, that there was some talk about um, um, having sessions, and I think we had a few um, different ones at different locations um, of like three, um, but very few. I, uh, this is Carla Fox. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. I don't know why you can't see me, but anyway, uh, about if we ever did go to uh, having uh, meetings at colleges and universities, uh, we had a retreat once. There's the downtown Hartford campus yes. at UConn. It's only like two blocks from the State Department of of consumer protection. So that wouldn't be hard if that was something that came up. No, oh, very good facilities. That's right. Uh, you know, this is John Schuyler again. I, I don't know what the reason that is. Is, is that to get you know, input from the academic community? Or? This is Frank Manelli. It sounds like something my colleagues in the accounting department would have thought was a good idea. So, <laughs> and I think it is, it's not a bad idea at all. 
um, not, it, it is a chance to get board members to interact with faculty that teach the subjects that are on the CPA exam. So maybe that was the incentive for it, but I'm not exactly sure. This is Mark again. I, I think the incentive was to uh, just to get the students more directly involved with the process. This is Marcia. I hope we don't go back to in-person meetings because Zoom meetings are so much nicer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is John. For, for us it is, but I think it's much more difficult for people that are att other attendees. Granted, we don't have too many and we probably would have more if we, uh, if we had it at, for example, the Yukon downtown. And that the business, they've got lots of great facilities. So, any other comments? Any other thing I told you? Were, there's the guy that brings the notes that remembers. Uh, any other thing? Anything else, Mark? No, that's it. Then uh, I think uh, maybe we should. Oh, uh, COVID 19. Goodness. Is, Nothing has changed as far as any extensions. I just put that out there just in case for some reason, you know, something had changed, but right now the NASBA is still, um, it has the same guidance for the end of the year um, for both the exam sections and for uh, the, the testing, um, you know, notices. So, but I just, you know, wanted to make sure that right. was there just in case something did change. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I think we're just gonna have to watch for a long time on this. Um, remote proctoring of the CPA exam. I, I know Carla Fox has a comment on this. Not, not really, uh, I mean, oh. <laughs> but you know, it sounds difficult and one can envision problems arising. Yeah, I, I'd like to know sort of the detail. How, how are you going to do this? Uh, well, I, I mean, I know how they do it on Blackboard when we do exams, uh, uh -huh. but maybe it looks like Frank has more to say. So, the, um, This is Frank Ronella. Yeah, I sat in on a session that NASBA and Prometric put together on this um, because Pro, Prometric actually has the is work well they, they have a it's obviously they're not using it yet but they 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 have something they're they've been testing um in order to use it um and it's something it, it, the uh they, they went over when it was it went quite a while there was some pros and cons and they they, they ran a demo of how the person the, the, the test taker would uh you know what everything that they have to go through in order just to take the exam, um, they, I guess it's pro pro proprietary right now, so they didn't want to send the link for the uh, boards to be able mm. to view at a meeting because those are public. And I haven't heard it. They were trying to figure out some way to um, get the um, get that to the boards, and they're considering maybe having just a separate session just for board members at some point. Because the one they have was for um, executive directors and people like me, um, <laughs> but, but it was interesting. I mean, they you know they're they're going with open eyes. They're not sure what um, you know what the reaction is going to be. They um, you know, but they, they want to just be ready in case it could be necessary. Whether it's for an extended shutdown, if if that ever happens going forward again, or even if candidates don't want to go on site even after you know, more looser restrictions um, are, are brought out. And uh, the, um, I'm just looking down at my notes. I don't want to spend, I can spend as much time on it as you like here, but no. um, the, the, I mean, the candidate, there are changes, um, you know, the, the, the questions too are whether the, you know, people, the candidates can do it at home, they can actually go or they can go to a different site and do it that way. I mean, the pro, the, the, one of the issues is that the, the software is now in the cloud versus on the um, PC itself. So 
course, that, that brings in issues with connectivity. Um, it brings in issues of equity. Some people clearly are going to have a better setup with, with others, whether it's internet connections or just the PC itself. Um, obviously, security concerns, and they, they do go through a process where it has to be a camera on the uh, on the um, PC. The, the software locks it down the PC, but and when the person is going in, they have them, them not only show everything that they're that they have to make sure there's you know they they don't have hidden notes or whatever. They have them show the 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 the, the, the proctor um, and, and there's a security agent. I guess they call it going around the room to see what else is in the room. Um, and uh, you know the, the, again the, the pros again they can administer the exam when the centers aren't available. The it's um, the candidates can take it, it, it more conveniently. And the question is, you know, is this the future? And the, and the, and the other, the bigger question or is, or related question is, should CPAs be the early adapters, adopters? The, um, because pro, the pet pro metric re, refer, uh, representative who was on the, on the, in the meeting on the, on the uh, said that their, their other clients are looking at this as well. Um, and then, you know, again, it's a web-based driver, which allows them more flexibility in developing model uh, options and more flexibility for the AI CPA to troubleshoot. And it reduces the, tri the, the time frame from operational activities and the cons again, or because it's web-based, um, you know, it may not be as stable as connectivity issues. Um, obviously yeah, I'm going to inter interject here a little bit because the reason I, I sort of put Carla on the spot, because one of the participants in the quote, regional breakout meeting uh, uh, was uh, from New York, said, I'm, an, I'm a, a, a current acting, active professor, and I beg you, don't go down this road. <laughs> it's yeah. not going to work. Uh, and particularly if you're looking at, uh, at, at trying to do this, because internet, a lot of places in, in upstate, more rural New York, just, you know, it breaks down all the time. Yeah, can I just add, it's sort of ironic. It just so happens uh, I was at a 4th of July pic neighborhood picnic. Uh, and as you might expect, living in stores like I do, most of the people there, a lot of them were professors. And we had one um, a child of, of a professor who uh, had to finish off her semester, past spring semester, uh, you know, online, and we got into a long discussion uh, about taking uh, exam and test taking over the uh, internet, and this poor uh, lady, girl student was so frustrated, and she described experience after experience where she'd get two-thirds of the way through an exam, and it was timed, and she'd lose her internet connection. Then they said, your time's up, and then she'd have to do the exam all over again, et cetera, and so forth, and other faculty that had tried using it uh, explained that there were the same issues. So I think that, it, yeah, it's going to, there's going to be a lot of glitches that are going to have to be worked out if they go that way. Uh, going to a site like a Prometric site would probably be a lot better in terms of the validity and uh, usefulness of the exam. Thank you. Okay. And just, yeah, they, they not yet, yeah, they will be, it's Frank Manelli again, they, they, they just, they will be at some point late summer, early fall, be sending out requests for comments. So we'll have the, the board will have a chance to let, let their, you know, you, you, we will have a chance to um, let people know what, uh, what, what we think. Thank you. You might want to check your uh, chat box and your question and answer box at the bottom when you move your mouse down to make sure there's nobody that's a attendee that has a question or a concern. Yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like nothing there yet. Okay. I've got Bonnie. I had Bonnie on mine. Right, right. But she doesn't have a question listed well, right now. Right. There's no hands up either. So in the chat bar. 
Okay, next item, uh, legislative proposals for 2021. Uh, I, I know we have some carryovers. And, and this was, I know this is Frank Manelli, and just last year we had discussed bringing up legislative proposals just because to get them into the pipeline, we need to, we'll, we'll be getting internally at DCP, getting requests for that in August. So it should be before the September meeting. So, you know, I don't know if there was anything in addition that the board might want to look into. Don't need specifics, but just anything in general. Okay. Any comments? None. Uh, I'm not sure this NASB Eastern Regional Conference online. Uh, what was what was that referring to, Frank? Well, that was just going over anything that. No, for sorry, this is Frank oh. Miller again. Just any just giving people a chance to discuss anything that came up there. They may want to. They feel they need want to want to bring to the attention of everyone else, because there were you know a number of different issues that were topics that were presented. Uh, this is Mark Aronowitz again. Uh, there was one issue uh, I think that we've discussed previously. They announced that the governmental accounting will be kept in the CPA exam. And I know that's something we wrote to NASBA. Right. On. So I assume there were many other replies uh, similar to ours. Okay, good. Good. I, I see from the, the chat here that, that Bonnie wants to bring up firm mobility, so I'm going to in, invite her if she wishes to unmute herself. You're on, so you can actually un just unmute and, and speak, Bonnie. Well, anyway, she'd like us to include I'm firm. Sorry. Okay, I go ahead. <laughs> I'm on my iPad and it kept on refusing to come up. But in terms of the firm mobility, it's something that the board had said, yes, it'd be willing to seek. And I believe it was either two or three years ago now. At that time, we were told choose one, you could have the CPE um, reciprocity or firm mobility. There was an opposition to it. It was just, you have to pick one or the other. And because $40,000 was a lot back then, we figured we were safer going with CPE reciprocity and CPE reciprocity impacted more individuals. This year, um, a number of states did seek firm mobility that hadn't had it in the past, such as Massachusetts, and they do expect it to pass there this year. They haven't stopped their legislative session. Maine is gonna be seeking it this year, and therefore I believe we would be the only New England state not to have it, and most states have adopted it now, the majority. So if we could see the mobility bill included in the DCP package, that would be helpful. Uh, Frank, do you think there would be any difficulty in, in, in getting that in? I, 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 mean, I, 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 I think the concept, conceptually, no. Uh, yeah, uh, with, with DCP stuff, it's usually they try to decide which is more important. And I certainly bring, bring it up. Uh, you know, I think it's because you know, we, I mean, Kat and I can talk about this separately as well, and uh, and all. But um, I, I mean, I, I I think it's I, I, you know the board's in favor of it, so we, we would not object. Um, and we can I can certainly bring it up. I don't. I think the only question would be if they f feel for some reason there is, um, what's how to put it. Uh, if, if, you know, just depending on what else they want, if they have other things that they feel that might might distract from. I, I don't know, but, but usually they're, they're pretty good about the, the the stuff that we put in because we don't ask for a lot each time. Um, but certainly when I, I will put it in, and um, so when I ask in August, get it proposed at that point, at least get that get it in the pipeline, and I can report back in September as to you know where we are at that point. It'll be just a week or two in, but. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I just, but you know, you never know. There's going to be, I was just going to say, there's going to be new chairs of that committee this year, just because of the changes that are taking place. So many legislators not seeking re-election, the change in leadership. That um, I would understand that if we had somebody that a, a chair of a committee that said you only get three, pick your three. 
that this wouldn't fall in the top three given that we've got a number of other proposals. But I would um, ask that, and I think this is the way you're leaning right now, Frank, is that you include it in your package and then make a strategic decision after the legislative session's begun so we know who we're dealing with, because it does make a difference. And, and, and we should tell them that we want to stay at least ahead of South Carolina, <laughs> not be number 50. <laughs> <laughs> okay, any, anybody have any comments or any thoughts they want to add to that? I don't think we have to take a, uh, a vote because we have previously voted to submit that. It was just a matter of we couldn't get everything in. But if anybody has any other thoughts, speak now. Okay, then moving on, extension of CPE and the accommodation of late fees. Frank? I thought this was our licensing area and I don't ah. see a licensing representative here. So I'm not really, I'm not in a position- I had to seen somebody that. else from, yeah, consumer protection on, but that person isn't there now, I don't think. So nope. I, can, I can follow up with licensing and see, um, you know, certainly I, since everything's extended till the end of the year now, September sure, sure, surely can't be too late to talk, talk as I can see what their concerns are. Um, okay, very good. Um, then before we go to comments or concerns of any person present today, the official one, uh, does anybody have any new business on the board, uh, new business that they'd like to put on the agenda for the next meeting or address at this point time? It looks like March just, is, oh, go ahead. Um, we have been receiving, and Lisa Bugrin is on the call too, so she may be able to respond to this um, better than me, but we've been receiving a number of calls asking about uh, carryover. So any of the additional credits that were earned, you know, how, how does the carryover year work? We've been responding, so I'd just like to make sure we're not telling people anything that's not accurate, but any extra credits they've earned um, through December will just be carried over to the next year, but the next year will end uh, June 30th for CPE purposes, right? We're going back to a regular schedule and CPE will be carried over till June 30th next year. Anything after the 40 hours that they've needed this right, year. Right, right. Knock on wood. Okay. This is Frank Fernelli. I've been, we've been getting similar um, questions and have been answering the same way that, right. Once you get to 40, um, you can, well. And in my memory, we haven't changed anything on that. Right. See, the thing is though, it's uh, way, way I'm answering it is if you get to 40 before, if you got to now looking back in the past as if you got to 40 before June 20, June 30th, Anything above that could be carried over, but that, I mean, I guess it kind of works out to the same, but right. anything over 40 by the end of the, you know, you get to 40 after June 30th and before the end of the year, right. Anything over 40 then you can, is now used forward to the next year, which ends on June 30th, 2021. So maybe, which would come out as the same answer. Same place. Looking yeah, at it same slightly place. Differently. Actually, you said much better than I did, Frank. So you, yours was more <laughs> articulate, but. Um, as you pointed out, it's a, it, it, we have the same result. And we, so you and I, you just the state society and the DCP are saying the same thing. So that could not make me happier. <laughs> <laughs> Usually we can only carry over 20. So what if someone did 40 by June 30th and another 40 in the next six months? Would then, they be? Able well, that would be 40 in the in the year, the, 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 the extension, they, they get an extension, but if they do it by the, the, the normal times, June 30, and then put the 40 in the next 60 months, it'd be just like okay. it was always. Okay, got it. Yes. 
Okay. Any other, any other, so it's just, uh, just looking to see who's back in the office. It looks like Dan and Marsha are. <laughs> oh. No, this is home. Oh, it is. I just have a ton of books. Yeah. Yeah. We're, Kevin, um, nice. we're, we're, um, we are, we're actually going to reopen on the 20th. Um, but partners, we can go down to the, we can go down to our offices if we want, if you want to, but. Everything that's right. going on with this July 15th deadline, I'd rather just work from home because it saves me an hour of commuting. <laughs> I yes. get more work done. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it, boy, my, my memory is short. I, I don't think we did the official uh, any third party. And if anything else, since Bonnie and Lisa are the only uh, members of the public here, if this is their last chance to get something in. Nothing from me, thank you. Okay, and uh, I hear nothing. Anybody else have any new business or anything they'd like to put on the next agenda? Okay, in that case, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. This is Marsha. Of course, Marsha. This is your Judy. I don't. <laughs> second. This is Mark. I'll second the motion. Okay. And no comment allowed on motion to adjourn. So all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Enjoy. And I guess everybody can get back into their t-shirts. <laughs> Very true. Have a good one. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Yep. I put a tie on just to remember how to do it. <laughs>